I started golf when I was 14, reluctantly, because I was playing all other sports. And my father said, come and play golf. I said, not for me, it's a sissy's game. And how wrong I was, because it's the most difficult sport. It was, I, was, I majored in four sports at school and golf was more difficult than all four put together. And then I turned professional at 17, much to my father's disgust. He wanted me to go on and be a doctor or a lawyer or of such. And I said to him, no, I'm not gonna complete my education because my education is going to be the world. I'm gonna be the best player in the world. Since then, have won 165 tournaments around the world, the most Australian Opens, the most South African Opens, and the only man in the world to have won the com combination of the regular Grand Slam and the senior Grand Slam. But it didn't happen by luck. Luck is the residue of design. It happened by hard work. I'm so pleased I went out and played because it's the greatest game that's ever been invented. My mother, she suffered an awful lot with breast cancer. I remember vividly her taking me an hour and a half uh, across town to go to school because she insisted on me going to a very, very good school. There were other schools in the area and she took me to school. I can remember her teaching me table manners. I can. I was smoking once and she didn't reprimand me. She said, come in and sit down and have a cigarette. And I took the cigarette and she lit it for me. She said, now breathe it in and blow it through your nose. And I blew it through my nose and I started to cough so badly that she never had to tell me not to smoke. And since that day, I have never smoked. I can remember her being in a hospital and I was in the ward and she was really suffering. And I remember her speaking on the telephone, and that was a, something that is ingrained in my whole life. She was speaking to a friend called Dorothy, and she said, Dorothy, and it, I could hear her on the phone. She said, Muriel, which was my mother's name, how are you feeling? She said, I've never felt better. I'm absolutely fantastic and very happy and enjoying life. And she put the phone down. I said, Mom, why did you tell Auntie Dorothy a lie? You're not well. Why did you do that? And she said, you must never, ever give people your problems because every single person on this earth has the problem. We've got to understand that everybody has to suffer. What we've got to say to ourselves, that there's only one person that can get through those difficulties, and that's you, your, you yourself. And they instilled in me a, a confidence and a positiveness and, and to make me realize that you've also got to be grateful and look at the glass half full and start of instead of half empty. I didn't have many people to really comfort me a great deal. I had good friends. I had good friends who welcomed me in their home. I had a great friendship with my brother and my sister, which I'm happy to say. My brother and sister, who are considerably older than me, uh, were very encouraging and, um, and mentioned how many people's parents had died. I thought of my mother, well, all the time. I mean, on my wall in my ranch, I have a picture of all our family tree. And I walk by my mother every day and I see her and I say, hey, mom. And so I think of my mother when I'm on my, on my ranch every day. And I believe I'll see her one day again. That's what my, my belief tells me. My mother did speak about faith a lot. So that was ingrained into me. And that helped me to overcome the difficulties of her passing away. I was blessed, I suppose, in one sense, you've got to look at it in a positive way, that I had my mother until I was eight years of age. Even at the age of 30, I often woke up at night crying, uh, dreaming about her and missing her, and then I'd regather my thoughts and say, well, you know, people have got it a lot worse than me. You have a choice every day you wake up. You can either be happy or you can be sad. Don't ever sit there and mope around and feel sorry for yourself and uh, think that you're alone because there are millions like you and there are millions that are worse off than you. You've got to be strong. You've got to realize that you've got to do it yourself. Just do it and realize and look at the glass, half full, not empty, and how lucky you are compared to other people. And one must always make comparisons how lucky you are compared to the rest of the world. Make yourself happy, play good music, dance, laugh, hang in there. Always remember in America, 
If you want to something, you can get it. And if you want to work hard, you'll get it. A work ethic is very, very important. And also, I think if you have a faith, it's a big help, whatever your faith may be.